This video shows you how to use Excel's Power Pivot data model to link tables without VLOOKUP so you can dynamically calculate last 12 months, year-to-date, and financial year-to-date totals with DAX. This is the last of a five-part tutorial that helps you work smart by guiding you on how to set up an automated template. You can download the template at the link below. We promise that it will save you a lot of time and pain in the long run as you frequently update your reports. Today's goal, we will use Power Pivot on top of the groundwork we did with Power Query in the previous tutorial to dynamically calculate measures such as rolling last 12 months, year-to-date, and financial year-to-date totals. This Power Series approach is much more efficient, cleaner, and organized than the normal Excel way we took in the first three tutorials. When all the backend work is set up, it's an easy selection of measures you want to see in the Power Pivot tables. Here, we can easily drop in the last 12 month, year to date, and financial year to date totals by the five broader categories, such as camera, cell phone, computer, home system, and others. Previously, we added three tables to the data model by Power Query. This data model sits in Power Pivot, which is where we will link them up with just drag and drop in this video. Doing so bypasses the need to use VLOOKUP which can slow your laptop significantly if you've got huge volumes of data with just too many rows. Once we've related the tables in a meaningful way, we can then write simple yet powerful formula with Power Pivot's Data Analysis Expression, or DAX for short. We can then easily slice and dice the calculated measures with slices. You'll experience how the complex sum and offset formula we used earlier in parts 2 and 3 can be simplified to much shorter and easy to understand DAX formula. No more triple checking of reference ranges within many lines of Excel formula to make sure we've got them right. Before we begin, make sure you've got the right version of Excel that has Power Pivot. You can refer to the link below to check and set up. Let's begin with creating relationships between the three data tables we added to the data model. You'll want to link up the data table with the category table so that you can assess the measures by the five categories at the broader level. Linking the data table up with the calendar table will separately enable some useful DAX formula. First, we locate where these three tables are. We know they have been added to Power Pivot's data model. Once your Power Pivot add-in has been installed, you'll have a new tab available called Power Pivot. In the section Data Model, click on Manage. This will open up the Power Pivot user interface. Then, in the Home ribbon, look for the View section and select Diagram View. There they are! To eventually calculate sales by the broader category, we need to link up Category Table with Data Table. The common column between the two tables is Category. Click on the Field Category in the Category table, hold down your click and drag it towards the Data table and hover above the Category field. Now, you can release your click. This connecting line shows that the Category table is related to the Data table based on the Field Category in a one-to-many relationship. The Category table has unique records for the column Category and hence is the one side of the relationship. As the data table has multiple repeated records for the column category, it thus forms the many side of the relationship. At this point in time, Power Pivot's drag and drop method can only do one to many relationships and not many to many. Similarly, link up the calendar table with the data table. Now that the tables are related, Power Pivot is able to pull the relevant data across the different tables when cross-referencing these tables within DAX formulas. A measure is like a function made up of one or more DAX formulas that is both time-saving and error-minimizing. Better yet, you can save and reuse it. This is a function distinctive to Power Pivot. The first measure in our template sums up the value column from our primary data table to get total sales. Go to Data View, select the cell in the second half of the window after the data table, and write the measure in the formula bar like this. Name your measure total, use a colon and an equal, 
before keying in the DAX formula sum. We want it to sum up the table data's column named value. Take a look at the different permutations of values created from this simple measure. Click on the Pivot Table button under the Home tab. Note that any pivot table created will sit on a normal Excel worksheet, even if you've been working on the Power Pivot Data model platform so far. In this case, our pivot table sits on the sheet titled Template Power Series. In this template, we've made use of category slices to slice and dice the pivot table. Though the first measure was very simple, you'll find its usefulness in the upcoming subsequent measures. The second measure, total underscore last year, in the template returns previous year's value figures. Here, we use the calculate and same year last period DAX formula. Reading it in English, we want to calculate the total sales filtered for the same period last year, given any point in time using the calendar table as a date reference table. Once we've written the measure, we switch back to Excel and plonk it into the earlier pivot table. Notice that the values in January 2008's total last year matches January 2007's total. Just like measures, these formula are exclusive to Power Pivot. Simple yet intuitive, they are also incredibly powerful. It's a relief when you think about our recent struggles. Remember wrestling with writing smart formulas to factor in different time period changes in normal Excel calculations? This measure also features our first cross-reference of different tables within the same DAX formula. Both the data table used in the total measure and calendar table are referenced here. With both total and total last year measures, we can easily get year-on-year -year figures by using the same simple mathematical equation that we use for the normal Excel way. Total year-on-year -year is simply dividing the total by total last year minus 1. Again, switch back to Excel and plunk it in the pivot table. The next significant DAX formula exclusive to Power Pivot to highlight is the dates year to date formula. We want to calculate the total sales filtered for the period dates year to date given the calendar reference table. To get year to date figures for the same period last year, simply replace the total measure with total year to date and use the same period last year DAX formula. You can check if the formula are working right by plonking total year to date and total year to date last year side by side in Excel pivot table. This portion is only important if your company's financial year does not follow the standard calendar year. The DAX formula for financial year-to-date figures is pretty similar to the year-to-date one. With one additional detail, you will need to specify the year and date. The example used in our template assumes that the company's financial year ends in March. We've set our year and date to be 31st of March 2009. You would need to modify this manually based on your company's financial year, that is, changing the ending day and month accordingly. The year doesn't matter. To get last 12 months figures, we use dates in period and last date. Combining these two DAX formulas allows us to build a dynamic formula. The formula updates itself to return a table of specific values that are summed up figures of the last 12 months for every different time period. Dates in period enables you to define a specific time length you want to narrow down your returned values to. In our case, we want a specific time frame of the past 12 months. Change the number of intervals field to minus 6 if you want to pass 6 months instead, or to 6 
if you want figures of the next six months. If you want the calculated intervals to be years instead of months, amend the interval field to reflect year. A breeze, right? By using the last date dex function as a date anchor, the formula automatically returns new summed up last 12 months figures as of any point in time. Switch back to Excel and plonk total last 12 months into the pivot table. Suppose we start with January 2008 and see the total sales in the last 12 months including itself, which is 55,703. Take a look at the next column and hey, it matches. To get last 12 months average, we will divide the total by the number of existing months as at any point in time. Just like we did in part 2, we have to account for situations where there's less than 12 months of existing data. We need to divide accordingly by the correct number of months to get accurate average figures reflected. To do so, we use Power Pivot's distinct count dex function. The concept of distinct count is pretty similar to what we use in Excel's match in part 2 in that it serves to return a distinct count of the number of existing months. When used together with Calculate, we are able to narrow down the data range where the count should be carried out on. Our formula setup instructs the distinct count function to return the exact number of months where data exists within the last 12 months for every different time period. In most instances, it will return the count of 12 as defined by the dates in period function. The exceptions would be when dealing with the very first 11 months of the raw data set, that is, when there are less than 12 past months to sum up. Again, plonk it into a pivot table and do a check. We know that the total last 12 months as of February 2007 sums up just 2 months of data to get 7,612. To get last 12 months average, we divide that by 2 available months to get 3,806. This matches total last 12 months average. As you've already done, each time after you write a measure with DAX, you'll typically plonk it into a pivot table or chart in Excel. We've layered on slices to make the report interactive so you can examine the business performance via different lens and at different levels. After parts 4 and 5, if you're trying to visually place where Power Pivot and Power Query are in relation to Excel, it looks something like this. You could have your raw data in a separate file or the same Excel file as your final report. In this template, we've kept it self-contained so it's in the same Excel file as the final report. Think of Power Query and Power Pivot as magic realms that reside in the report's Excel file. They are like data processing layers sitting in between your original raw data and final pivot tables and report charts. So whatever that you do in Power Query and Power Pivot is saved as part of the same report file you're working on. Once you've got the entire workflow all set up, you just need to click to refresh forever after when you add new data to your raw data source. So there you have it, the complete teardown of the automated Excel template in five parts. In parts one to three, we started off showing you how you could use normal Excel formula to automate typical business measures like last 12 months, year to date, and financial year to date calculations. While that worked, it still felt somewhat clunky and tricky to maintain. Hence, in parts 4 and 5, we showed you the more efficient, cleaner, and robust alternative using Power Query and Power Pivot. Let us know if you found this template and accompanying 5-part tutorial useful by commenting below. If you're interested to find out more about Power Query and Power Pivot, check out our other videos or visit our blog. We've also got highly interactive and engaging in-person training courses if you're interested in a more in-depth approach. Links below.